Good afternoon. Welcome to the Automated Home Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about how Alexa went a bit crazy yesterday, and I have no idea why. And I'm going to be letting you know about my failed attempt to get this vibration sensor working the way that I hoped that it might work. Let's jump into it. Alexa's been kind of strange. I would say usually... 90 to 95 percent of the time alexa is responsive and is cooperative everything's good usually occasionally there'll be a miscommunication or i'll ask alexa to do something and it's just like she didn't hear me or something or this is a crazy long delay which is kind of strange as well but yesterday things really went haywire and i don't know why and it's got me a little bit anxious trying to think about what could be the cause of this maybe there's nothing to it i don't know but here's the thing right so i tested the water leak sensor the the flow that i have set up in homey that i described uh recently and it's working well but yesterday it didn't work yesterday morning and i'm like what's going on here like nothing seemed to work except for the push notification and the notification on my phone in the homey app but The light at the dining table didn't turn on. And I also didn't hear uh, kitchen water leak detected from my Sonos Arc soundbar. And that's supposed to happen. So I'm like, what's going on here? I went to troubleshoot and I realized that the light switch on the wall had been switched off. So that's why the light didn't come on. That solves that one. But then also, I, um, yeah, I just started wondering, like, what's going on with the... Sonos Arc soundbar. And I was trying some other Alexa commands, you know, my usual Alexa good morning, which like I described previously, it tells me the date and gives me a weather forecast, tells me the sunset and sunrise times for the day, tells me an interesting fact from history and it plays classical music for half an hour on Amazon Music. And that didn't work. Nothing was working. Like I was talking to Alexa and I could see on my Sonos Arc soundbar the little white light on top of it was changing color ever so slightly, which is what happens when Alexa hears the wake word. So I know that it's awake and Alexa is listening to me, but just nothing was happening. And I'm like, this is very, very strange. So I went looking, I looked in the Alexa app on my phone and it said everything was online except for the Sonos Arc soundbar. It said offline, not online. I'm like, what? that's weird. What's going on there? And then I looked 10 minutes later and it was online. But then I clicked into it and inside it said it was offline. And then 10 minutes later, it was just, it was just really, really strange. I'm like, okay, is this an Alexa problem or is this a Sonos problem? Because, you know, everyone's talking about all these Sonos problems at the moment. And I thought, hey, they fi- they finally got me. You know, the new app update has finally caught up with me. And now I also can't use my Sonos products as well. So immediately I'm paranoid about that. So I go on to Twitter or X and I start looking for Alexa down news. Don't see anything. Latest mentions on Twitter and X. Don't see anything that seems to be relevant. And then I start doing the same thing for Sonos. Don't see anything that's particularly relevant. And then in the Sonos app on my phone, I go digging. And in the Sonos Arc soundbar, in the Sonos app, it says... Strong Wi-Fi connection. There is a strong connection. So then I think, okay, well, the problem doesn't appear to be Sonos. Like in the Sonos app, everything seems hunky-dory. Everybody's happy. Everything's fine there. I think it was Alexa. But then I go paranoid. I'm thinking, okay, well, I've just recently added a whole bunch of products uh, and devices to my smart home. And I've added some Alexa skills. Did I overwhelm? Alexa, is it overloaded? Did something cause something else to short circuit? Is that why this is going on? It was really, really strange. Oh, she's just uh, woken up. I'm I'm saying the A word a bit too many times here and she just woke up. Uh, My apologies if I'm triggering your devices here, by the way. I didn't know what to do about it. This went on all day yesterday. It was just problematic. And then towards the end of the day, in the Alexa app, I did see my Sonos Arc soundbar was online. If I clicked into it, everything looked fine. And Alexa was starting to be responsive. And then this morning, it's like everything's fine. It's like everything's 
just just good as usual. So I have no idea, no explanation. I don't even have any good theories about what was happening yesterday. It wasn't a Wi-Fi issue. Everything else was fine. And strangely enough, it seems to only be voice because in the Alexa app, I was able to control the Akara T1 light bulb that's at the dining table just on and off. I could control the brightness. I don't know. I've got no idea. But it is a little bit disconcerting. So if you have any theories about what was happening or how to... Can I even reset Alexa? Or is that a pain as well? I was thinking, like, if I was to try to reset Alexa, what would that even involve? Would I have to sign out, delete the app, re-download it, sign in again? Would I have to remove devices and try and re-add devices? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't have that many at the moment, but you can just imagine how much of a headache that would be in the future if you had a lot of devices. So anyway, I don't know what was happening yesterday. Maybe she just wanted the day off. I've got no idea, but it seems like we are back to normal today. Let me tell you about a fail. <laughs> this is um, pretty funny, actually. So I mentioned that I bought this Akara vibration sensor. When I was in the store... I bought this because I opened up my Homey app and I clicked add device. I searched by brand name Akara. I scrolled down a little bit and I could see vibration sensor in there in the Homey app. I clicked on it. It looked exactly like the one that I was planning on buying in the store. I thought, okay, fantastic. Even though this says on the box, Akara hub required. I'm pretty sure it says that. Yeah, Akara hub is required. I thought, I don't believe you. I don't think it is required. And I was right. So I brought it home. And one of the things that I mentioned yesterday or in the part one, yeah, it was yesterday, was that I had an idea about how to add Akara devices and in the future other brand devices into Homey. And that is, I don't think I need to add them into the Akara app first, just as long as I know how to put the device into the pairing mode, then I could just put it into the pairing mode and yeah, pair it with Homey. And that worked. That worked. Perfectly. So for this one, I think I had to press and hold the button for five seconds and then it entered pairing mode on Homey, out of it. Where we go. Fantastic. So I set up a couple more flows. I set up another battery monitoring flow, the same as for the water leak detector. Sensor? Sensor. Same thing. So when the battery percentage gets down to 10%, I'm going to get a push notification and a notification in the Homey app. It's going to tell me, hey, time to change the batteries but more importantly and this is my idea my idea was to take this vibration sensor and i wanted to affix it somewhere to our dining room table so that i could create a flow if it's after let's say 6 30 p.m and before 8 a.m so basically if it's nighttime if vibration is detected on the table so like if you bump the table then turn the light on, which is the Akara T1 LED bulb that I've talked about already. Turn that light on, keep it on for 10 minutes, and then if there's no vibration detected, then turn the light off, right? My idea was to try and turn the entire dining room table into one big light switch. It didn't work the way I expected it to. So look, this vibration sensor, I think it's good. I just don't think it's good for the idea that I had in mind. So here's what happened, right? I affixed the vibration sensor to the table and I set up my flow and activated it and thought, oh yes, here we go. Time to test. This is going to be beautiful. So I tapped the table kind of lightly and I thought, oh, no, I, want, I want this vibration sensor to be so sensitive it could detect a mouse fart in an adjacent room, right? I thought that's how sensitive I want this thing. So all you have to do is just sit down at the table, anywhere on the table, just tap it a little bit, nothing crazy, and then bang, the lights come on. Like how beautiful would that be? That was my idea. That did not happen. So to test it, I started off at the diagonally opposite end of the table compared to where the sensor is, and I just tapped it lightly, nothing happened. And then I tapped it a bit harder. And nothing happened. I thought, okay, fair enough. So then I moved to a corner that was a little bit closer to where the sensor was. And I tapped that one. Nothing happened. I tapped it harder. Nothing happened again. I thought, okay, well, that's a bit disappointing. And then I went to basically right where the sensor was. And I tapped and I tapped and I tapped and nothing happened. And then I had to tap the sensor itself. And then the light came on. 
So it worked. I just don't think that this vibration sensor is sensitive enough for that particular idea. <sighs> it's a bit sad. Now, there are a couple of settings in setting up the flow. You can d decide, I can't remember exactly what Akara calls it, but you can either have if motion is detected, then that can be a trigger or if vibration is enough, is above a certain threshold, above a certain number, that could be a trigger. I experimented with a few different things. I tried if vibration is above zero, that didn't help. I tried if vibration is above one, that didn't help. The only time I got it to work, I think, was when I said if vibration is detected. And then, yeah, you basically have to go to the sensor and you have to tap it and then the light comes on. So it's kind of like just using the light switch on the wall. It's not really helpful, not really beneficial. I don't think I'm going to keep it there. The other problem I had is my intention with that flow would be that if there's vibration detected, turn the light on. And then if there's no vibration detected after 10 minutes, turn it off. But I don't think it works like that. So what happened was I bumped the sensor, the light came on, and then in the next 10 minutes i bumped it a few more times but that didn't re-trigger that didn't restart the flow and what happened was the light ended up turning off after 10 minutes which would be a little bit annoying you can imagine if you're having guests for dinner for example and maybe maybe it did work the way i wanted it to so it was very responsive to a light touch or a light tap that'd be pretty cool but i still think it would turn the light off every 10 minutes and you'd have to tap the table again so it's still a little bit annoying I think the sensor has potential to be useful in other parts of the home, other ideas, but that was a fail. And that didn't work the way I thought it would. It was going to work, unfortunately. Um, something else I want to share with you is I mentioned that I ordered an Akara P2 motion sensor for the outside lift lobby area. That store, they actually contacted me. And they said, hey, look, we, we can't get that. I don't know why, because they seem to have a whole lot of other Akara products. But for whatever reason, they said, we can't get the P2. The newest version we can get is the P1. Is that okay? And I did a little bit of digging. P1 versus P2, what's the difference? Seems like not much difference. It seems like the P1 is perfectly fine. It seems like, oh, and here's the other interesting thing as well, right? In Homey, only the P1 is in there. So I ordered one that, I ordered the P2 and I can't even find that in Homey. So potentially I saved myself a bit of embarrassment there. I don't know, maybe just because you don't see a particular product in Homey, maybe that doesn't mean necessarily that you can't add it into Homey. But for sure, I have peace of mind that I can see the P1 in the Homey app. So I know I can add it to Homey. The only differences I could see from my research and feel free to let me know if there's other things that I'm missing uh, that the battery actually seems worse on the P2. So it seems like the one that I'm going to get, the P1, actually has a longer lasting battery. So that's good. And I'm missing out on matter or thread, but I don't care. I'm just going to connect it using Zigbee. So seems like that's going to be fine. And they already have that one in stock, but I'm not going to go and pick it up until the other LED light bulbs are in the store. And then I'm going to go and grab all of them and I'll set up the lift lobby area and try and get that flow going, which, yeah, that should be interesting as well. I think that is just about it in terms of updates. And by the way, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to be sharing updates, whether it's uh, video or audio only. Um, too often, you know, obviously I've just created a couple of these videos, a couple of these updates in a short period of time. In the future, I'll create a video or a podcast when I've got something to share. So it might be every couple of days if there's a, an update to share with you, or you might not hear from me for a month. But while we're at it, if you're watching on YouTube, please drop a like, let me know you're enjoying it. And if you're listening on a podcast directory, leave a review wherever you're listening. I appreciate that a lot. Let me share with you a funny story because I didn't share one uh, yesterday because we got cut off. All right, so I've mentioned that we have some difficulty getting our newborn baby to sleep. For some reason, oh, and by the way, this is kind of the end of the smart home stuff, right? So if you're here for smart home stuff, we're finished. We're just going to talk about something funny. Uh, for some reason, our baby, he doesn't sleep that well in his cot. 
if it's nice and quiet and comfortable and uh, you put him in a cot, seems like an ideal sleeping environment to me. It's pretty hard to get him to go to sleep. You've got to pat him for half an hour and then try and transfer him into the cot. And even then, like, good luck. Maybe he's not going to sleep. But we figured out he does sleep really, really well if you put him in this, like, uh, it's called an ergo baby. It's a baby carrier thing. Um, I'm not sure if this brand is worldwide, but it's something that we have here in Malaysia. I think it's fantastic. It's kind of like a backpack and then you just slot your baby in and um, you might have seen people walking around and they've got they've got a baby on their chest, right? It's It's one of those things. When we put him in this thing, he falls asleep within five or 10 minutes and he's just out. Doesn't matter where we are, what we're doing, bouncing around, loud environment, he's fine. As long as he can just feel that he's on you, I guess he's happy. So I said to my wife, I said, uh, this is right when we were having difficulty trying to put him to sleep. We tried to put him in the car, failed. I said, put him in the ergo baby. Put the, I'm going to put the ergo baby on. I'm going to go to the gym. Kind of half joking, but I thought I'd give it a try. And I did. So I rocked up at the gym wearing uh, this ergo baby with our baby inside. And the, the guy at the front desk, he kind of looked at me and I said, can I come in with a baby like this? And he's like, uh, I don't know. And he tried to like message his boss and he didn't get a reply. And after a couple of minutes, he kind of looked at me and said, look, if you know how to take care of him, you can, you can come in. You're welcome. That's okay. And I said, yeah, of course I know how to take care of him. He's, he's my son. You know, we'll be fine. So yeah, I got the green light, went into the gym, started doing a few little bits and pieces. And then after a few minutes, the owner actually started walking over to me. I thought, oh, that's it. I'm going to get kicked out. I'm in trouble now. And he was laughing. He thought it was hilarious. He wanted to take photos. <laughs> So um, I didn't stay there very long because uh, there's not many exercises that I could actually do. But if you just want to go and walk on the treadmill or maybe do a few things when you're standing up, obviously I couldn't sit down because it would be too uncomfortable for him and I definitely couldn't lay down. But yeah, you can actually do a few things. And I was surprised because it was so loud in there. They're playing this loud music and he slept. He slept the whole time, didn't wake up once. The owner of the gym thought it was fantastic. He's taking, he's filming a video. I think I'm on Facebook now. So yeah, funny story. In fact, you may not believe me. So I'm going to append, I'm going to add a little bit of the video footage at the end of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to add that on so you can check that out as well. But it's kind of ridiculous. So that's it in terms of updates for today. Yeah, if there's anything, if you want to reach out, you can reach me at Marty at automatedhome.com as usual. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll talk again soon.